Next on the agenda be Mr. Eric Lovestrange. Eric Lovestrange. Yeah, Commissioners, uh, Eric sent me an email here in the last week that he is over in Walton County. They're having a county extension director's meeting, and so there were no action items, and if there's any questions you have for him, feel free to contact him, and he'll get right back in touch with you. And then keep up the good work. Next on the agenda will be the library assistant supervisor, Ms. Whitney Nixon Roundtree. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. All right, just a little information about what's going on at the library. Um, we're proud to welcome our new part time, uh, bleh, 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 yep, part time employee, Mary Weitzel. Uh, Mary's first day was February 18th. She's completed training at both branches, um, so you may see her at either location. Um, this way she can fill in as needed. Uh, the Friends of the Franklin um, County Public Library had their annual um, book sale. It's actually a bread, soup, and book sale. Um, so they completed that at both branches. Um, between staff, volunteers, and visitors, we had over 100 in attendance at both locations. Um, this was actually done after I submitted my report, but I wanted to publicly thank Rick Watson and the Rock by the Sea Foundation for their donation of $8,400 to the Friends of the Franklin County Library. This money goes towards our Music as a Second Language program. It pays the teachers, it pays for the instruments. Um, it also goes towards funding for our summer reading program. We've uh, already started booking some wonderful storytellers. Animal Tales will be back. Um, another big thing going on is um, the Franklin County Public Libraries will be serving as 2020 Census Assistance Centers. Um, staff has been trained to um, help any patrons coming in um, to get their self counted. Um, we've been trained with videos to help people navigate the website. Um, let's see, what else we got going on? We just started a new diabetes class. Um, it's a free class for adults with diabetes and prediabetes. This course is taught by a certified diabetes care and educational specialist um, who will guide participants in learning how to better manage um, this complicated condition. Class will meet the first Tuesday of each month from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the East Point Branch. And lastly, um, those still needing um, free tax aid or assistance with their taxes um, can still sign up um, through April 9th. Um, it's on Thursdays alternating at each branch, so um, sign up and make an appointment at either location. And that's that for me. Anybody got anything for the Ms. Ryan Creek? I'd like to thank you, Whitney, for the good job you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Keep up the good work. Yeah. It's peace. Relief. Next on the agenda will be Ms. CDBG Administrator Report, Ms. Deborah Bed. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so you have my report in your Let agenda me get packet. Your name, name okay, for the Debbie record, Belcher, Romellis Planning and Development Services. Um, Thank you. My report. You have um, one update to that is that on the uh, Creamer residence, the taxes were paid after my report was submitted. Um, for, so the action item I have for you today is. Um, to approve $70,393.28 in CDBG funding for Kathy Hill's mobile home replacement contract that's on Buck Street, um, plus up to $500 for change orders if required and funds for the CDBG mortgage recording. So moved. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Massey. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Uh. Right. All opposed, that passed unanimous. Now this one, this uh, as part of our environmental review, we did do uh, a septic system inspection and um, the inspector said it's okay, there was a small hole at the end of the drain field, but they said they thought the septic system was okay. Um, I sent it to the health department back in November, and I still don't have, you know, a okay or no okay back from them. So um, I believe it's county policy that staff can approve up to ten thousand dollars without bringing things to the board. Um, is that correct, Mr. Chairman? I believe she's referring to the county's local bid policy, and it's actually now up to fifteen thousand okay. dollars. That the board can, can purchase items without the necessity to go out for a bid 
unless the bidding requirement is required by some other state law or federal requirement. So what my thought was is if the health department says, yes, you do have to do some septic tank or septic system improvements, that I could get that arranged and have it approved either by Mr. Maron or Mr. Currington and not have to, you know, bring that back to the board. Ready to vote on that? So moved. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Massey. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Okay. And we have, uh, as of uh, this afternoon, we will have uh, four mobile homes on order at this point uh, to arrive, and one of them, I mean, new one you approved three of them at the last board meeting now this is a fourth one uh, we have one being that was actually delivered yesterday from a previous time so we're moving along a little more oh and there is one thing I, if you don't mind when there was a discussion about the CDBG disaster recovery um, the last I heard which uh, I think it was last Friday there was a webinar and as of that time, the state was still saying that we can't use these funds for mitigation, only for actual damages. So, uh, but there have been a lot of, of people in webinars and in these public meetings, which I also attended the same one that Michael Marone, I mean, uh, the Alan Pierce and, and Commissioner Jones attended. Um, there's been people asking, can we use this money for mitigation? And the last I heard was the state was saying not unless HUD or Congress says we can, that it was not allocated by Congress for mitigation, only for addressing damages. So that is something that the county could focus on in in your resolution or whatever that's the point of the resolution commission it's exactly what i was getting at earlier is that we get to to tell the governor and the state our priorities and our strategies which includes mitigation and if we do it as a region all the all the impacted counties do it together the message gets across to tallahassee and they and they'll we are hoping that they'll, they'll get it done that's exactly where was i was heading this morning and also, um, as far as using these CDBG disaster recovery funds as matched for other grants, in theory that is possible. However, what the funds have to be used for still has to be CDBG DR eligible. So like if it's a FEMA or uh, uh, HMGP, you know, or the, you know, the home retrofit, whatever, CDBG can be used if what's being done is eligible for those funds so that's that's the caveat i want to make sure you're aware of and one other point is that at the last i've heard the state intends to you to handle all the housing funds directly not with the local governments in other words homeowners anybody uh i don't know if they're only going to use uh use it for homeowners or whether they're going to do any rentals or not but the people who own the housing would apply directly to the state not to the counties or cities for housing assistance so if there's going to be any matching or anything like that for something that would be eligible um you might want to put in a resolution that that even though the state is handling the housing funds that the counties or cities be allowed to receive some of the housing funds if it's going to be linked i mean otherwise i don't that it's not going to be very feasible to say we're going to match other grants housing grants uh with cdbg disaster recovery because it, it's the, the money doesn't come to the county it, it goes directly to the owner Mm -hmm. uh, one issue of this trailer that's going on Buck Street yes sir can you also fix the road so the, the mobile home company can bring the trailer to Buck Street <laughs> that's a good point I think they have in the past uh, some of the dealers have dumped up some dirt uh, in in the worst of the, really? the dips it, it is bad I, I, I mean even in my car I'm driving all over the place trying but it's a private road and um, but it needs to be fixed before they can get this trailer in there. That's creative. That, the, the dealers are aware so of it. can you use some of your money to do that? 
the dealers are aware of it. So I can't use it directly, <laughs> but the dealers know what they have seen it. They they know. So I I, I leave it. Just figured I would ask. Uh, yeah, um, I, I can tell you that I've had I've heard a few complaints about um, that several and I, I'm not verifying that this is true. I'm just telling you uh, that I've heard that several years ago, the county dug a ditch along. I think it was like around Bear Creek and Ridge and that the ditch is now dumping the water right on the buck you know goes through the property right toward buck street now i don't know if that's true or not but that is something i've heard had you know heard uh, complaints about well, i can tell you the county ain't been on private property and dug no did yeah so as that, you heard this morning we're not allowed to go on private property well if that's, we were my driveway's a little messed up uh -huh. and my yard needs cutting <laughs> that's right my house needs uh, weed eating mm -hmm. yeah. so if we can go on private property i'd like to put that on the top of the list well that's why i you know when i hear and that's why things, we don't go on private property yeah, it, we're not allowed to do that yeah it didn't so, I mean, it didn't but it sound all ties right. together if we can go on private property to do this we can go in there and cut cut my grass. It's only a couple of acres. Cut the grass. <laughs> we'd eat around the house, you know, and mm -hmm. fix my driveway. Mm -hmm. Private property, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, anyway, I understand. I yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, Commissioner, I like that. Deborah never really answered your question about using the money. <laughs> She's a better politician well, you than I. Trailer there, so if we had <laughs> a good politician. If we need, if she needs to fix the road to get the trailer there, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I, I like the way she you. answered it. But I do it need to clear. Uh, Deborah, uh, if you would, I'd like you to clear something up. Go. Let's go back to the Anna and the Devin Creamer issue, where you had in your report at the time of the report right. where they their taxes weren't paid. They've since paid their taxes. Yes, correct. So I need that on the record. So as we work towards getting them their their unit, you know, that'll be cleared up. Okay. Yeah. What about the yard still not being cleaned? I um. Is that a requirement that the place be cleaned up? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. And Do the, they know that? Yes, and they have known that for over a year. And have they done it? Well, as of last week, they had not. Now I, I'm going to go out there again today, and um, Anna knows that as of last week, it wasn't going to fly. But I'm just saying that that's part of the program. Then you got to comply with the program. That's right. In order to get your trailer, so that that's again we can't go on private property. So that's something that they're going to have to take, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. Anything else? Yeah. Anybody else got anything for me? Bill? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda will be the restore coordinator, Mr. Alan Pierce. He's not here, so he standing is attending in. attending Triumph, Triumph meeting, I believe, over in Port St. Joe today, Commissioners. With Trump, can, can we do them rule with any Trump money? I sent him a text. I know a few minutes I will, sir. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so next on the agenda will be the clerk of the court, Ms. Marcia Johnson. No report today. No report. Okay, we're going to go to the next one, which is a public hearing, but it's not 11 o'clock. So <coughs> I'll try and squeeze next, my report in. <laughs> we'll go to county coordinator okay we Mr. Mark Maroon. straight to page seven item 17 uh, the planning office has prepared by the planning office I mean mr. Kierington has prepared, prepared grant I'm not going to tell a story commissioner Applic grant applications for eight scops crap and sick P projects to be funded by FDOT <coughs> these projects include and SCOP is small county outreach program commissioner Ford said he'd like me to explain what each one are the replacement of three culverts highway 67 at woman creek resurfacing of hickory dip in east point which is needed and paving the remainder of mill road uh, there's uh, also a SCOP bridge repairs trot creek bridge on mill street and syrup branch bridge on new river road and i know i saw the emails where mark and uh, the road department going back and forth about getting the correct information for those grants uh, the ones for small county road assistance program known as scrap widening and resurfacing of highway 67 from state forest road 166 to state forest road 172 widening and resurfacing of highway 67 from state forest road 172 to the liberty <coughs> county line the SACP county incentive grant programs replacing the culverts on the ryan drive between 9th street 
Northwest and Sunset Circle in the city of Carabel. Each of these applications require a resolution from the Board of County Commissioners stating that the Board supports the projects and authorizes the Chairman to sign the application form. They all have to be submitted by Friday, March 20th. Board action to approve the resolutions. So moved. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Massey. Second. Second by Commissioner Burt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. We already addressed item 18. Item 19, at your February 18th meeting, I was directed to coordinate with Mr. Roger Hall, uh, Sacred Heart uh, President, a uh, date that would be he will be available to present changes to the Sacred Heart uh, proposal for health care to this Board of County Commissioners. The earliest date that Mr. Hall is available and this room is available is Monday, March 9th. If there are no scheduled conflicts, we could meet at 1.30 p.m. right here in this room on Monday, March 9th. Pleasure. So move. Second. Got a motion on flow by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Quick with, a, with a comment. Sorry. I just want to just publicly say that we as a county are reaching out for all possibilities for input, and we are proactive in this invitation for Sacred Heart and Alliant to give us all the information we need, and we are open access for that information. Yes. And what I don't have in my report, because it was pending on, on this, is, is an information to let you know USDA, if, this, if you guys had approved this special meeting, which you did, USDA actually gave me an extra week during this month before we have to respond about the obligations of funds. If not, we would have to, but uh, because you did, that gives me a little leeway with, with USDA. Mr. Chairman, Go ahead. Michael, I, I actually have a conflict with this particular date. I'll try to get my point to change. Okay. But if I can, I want to let the board know that I may not be able to make this. Yes, sir. Okay. Hustling here. Okay, highway. I'm trying to pull Alan Pierce. Highway. Uh, Russell Large with Anovia. I saw Russell here sometime earlier. Uh, is working on. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me let's start over. Russell Lodge and Noe is working on revising the plans to reduce the length of the sidewalk by approximately one mile to bring it within the current budget for the project. FDOT has right. informed the county that this reduction in the project will require the county to get a, a new approval from FDOT for the project. So we will have to rebid the project. Therefore, all of the bids open on January 7th will have to be rejected by the board. When we have authorization from FDOT, we will come back to the board for authorization to rebid the project. So I need board action to reject all bids opened on January 7th for this project. Pledge of the vote. So moved. Second. We've got a motion on the vote by Commissioner Masses, second by Commissioner Burke. I have a question. Discussion. Uh, Michael, are there going to be any costs incurred? From any costs that? incurred, Carabell will pay for it. That's between Anovia and the city of Carabell. Okay. I verified that with Mr. Kieran. Okay. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, I pass unanimous. Okay, if I move on. As part of your planning and zoning report at your last meeting, Ms. Kelly, Ms. Amy Ham Kelly, your zoning administrator informed the board of a dock that was built without a permit. Since then, staff has found another violation in the county on a commercial zone property when accessory structure was built without a <coughs> permit. That property owner was aware of the process but chose to seek forgiveness rather than permission. As these violations are occurring more often than not, it's time for the county to consider making it <coughs> easier to seek permission rather than forgiveness. I suggest authorizing Attorney Schuler to create a draft ordinance for your review that would increase the fines and penalties <coughs> for anyone not obtaining a permit before they start any construction, building, or any type of project where a, project is, a permit is required in the unincorporated areas of the county. So I'm asking the board to give Attorney Schuler the permission to proceed with creating such a draft ordinance to present to you, and then we could start the process of public hearings and going through the ordinance process. So moved. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Burke. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Commissioner's early registration is open for the Florida Association of Counties Annual Conference and Educational Exposition, which we all know is a summer conference. The conference will be will run from June 9th to the 12th and will be held in Orange County. 
uh, if you would, confirm with Ms. Bankston that you are planning on attending so that the registration reservations can be done as early as possible. As you all know, the hotel rooms go rather quickly when, at these summer conferences. Um, so I just need board action to create, where am I? Uh, I'm sorry, authorized travel expenses for the commissioner, staff, and attorney Schuler to attend this conference. I got a motion on floor by Commissioner Jones. Second. Second by Commissioner Parrish. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. And uh, by earliest possible, I'm actually asking you guys on the next break to walk next door and, and let Ms. Bexton know, if okay. you could. Uh, the 25th anniversary of Camp Gordon Johnson Day's event will be from Friday, March 13th to Sunday, March 15th. The parade will be on Saturday, March 14th, starting at 10.45 a.m. in Carabelle. Besides having Ms. Brownell and Mr. Davis provide the, the four wheels of transportation for the parade, is there anything else, uh, any other arrangements the board uh, would like me to uh, do for you before the parade starts? No, I'm good. I, I was actually informed by my wife that we're going to be at Disney during that time. So you mean the boss? Yeah, I, I was voluntold. So yes. I won't be there. Okay. <laughs> So if there's anything else before that parade starts, let me know. Let me arrange it for you guys. You know, I mean, I know you bring your own candy, et cetera, et cetera, for the parade. You know, so there we go. All right. So if I could, let me hit the information items because they're pretty important here. Inform the board that the finance office received the two hundred twenty-six thousand dollars from Florida Department of Emergency Management, designated for Weems Memorial. This funding is a result of a one point one million dollar Hurricane Michael revenue loss reimbursement claim submitted to FDEM. <laughs> on behalf of Weems. Earlier in the month, Weems requested $150,000 advance from the trust fund based on this approved reimbursement to make sure there was adequate funding for the upcoming payroll. The 150 dollars will be or has been transferred uh, back to the trust fund and the remaining $76,000 will be transferred to Weems. In addition, separately, due to a partial uh, low-income pool, what they refer to as lip payment, the CEO was able to transfer $135 to the savings, the money market account for Weems. So just want to bring you guys an update on the financing, Good. a little better than what it was. The Division of Aquaculture will hold two pre-application meetings for anyone interested in applying for a lease at the Four Mile Aquaculture Youth Zone, known as the AUZ. The first meeting will be held on Wednesday, tomorrow from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And the second will be on Thursday, March 5th, from 3 to 5 p.m. Both meetings held at a community center located at One Bay Avenue. That is right there, uh, here in Apalachicola. And I'm quoting uh, Ms. Portia Sapp's email here, because this is an important thing. Applicants must attend the entire meeting and present a photo ID to be eligible for the preference for attending the meeting. The preference, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Commissioner Paris could explain in more detail in order to get this preference to have first rights, because we've had a lot of meetings, and, and you guys have fought for these preferences, and Com Commissioner Locke, you've done the same thing. You wanted to make sure there were preferences to local people, to people that had uh, uh, the oyster harvesting license. All those preferences, you have to show ID and be there for the whole meeting. You just can't show up, leave in the first break, and expect to get the credit for that preference. <coughs> Very important. And finally, commissioners, the, uh, uh, informed the board that the Corps of Engineers has contacted Alan. They actually contacted me again last night, yesterday evening, that they'll be coming over here the week of March 9th next week to provide the county with cost estimates and three proposed designs for dredging the East Point Channel. Yes, uh, Alan will provide the board with more information when he receives it. So they'll be here next week and we'll have some, hopefully besides this, uh, some sort of timeline and Alan will discuss that as soon as we possibly can. So they're not going to dredge both of them channels together? There's two different projects. There's two different projects. What we're trying to do, Commissioner, is save on the mobilization fee for, for two miles, but we have, to, we have to start, we have to treat the East Point one separately and do that first. Okay. Then it could mobilize and they'll move right over to the next one. Okay. Yes, sir. And how it is working on that, that sports site for you, make sure it's clear to be, so it starts right away. There's no hold up on our end so they can put, you know, the, the dredge, the waste there, the spoil. The, the, the difference, if I may, Mr. Chairman, the difference is the one for East Point is actually money that the government, that the federal government appropriated to the Corps mm -hmm. to get yeah. done, and the other one's coming out of some of our BP funds. Too. Yeah. Yeah, the money been there 20 years ago. 15, oh, yeah. They used it in New Orleans one time. 
Yeah, what mm -hmm. hurricane was that, Commissioner? Katrina. 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 There we go. That's they right. used they it moved back for then. Katrina. It, but that's when they pulled the done it back then. When yeah. They had to use it for, for that. But they the boss. Hopefully the light is at the end of the tunnel, Commissioner. And that's my report. And does anyone have anything else for me? Okay. Well, we're going to start lying and do that public here. Can we, we got about on. one minute. So we take five seconds, set up the computer, and get all the maps that Attorney Schubert wants on there? Yes, we can. All right. Take five. Let's get it set up. 